J O Y. You know what that's an acronym for? Jesus first, others second, yourself last. That's how to have joy, real joy. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, in chapter 16. Book of Matthew and chapter 16. Our passage of scripture this morning is going to be verses 5 through 12. Let's begin reading with verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. That's a problem. And then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he had, how he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Jesus had been conversing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were trying to ensnare him. And they asked this question and they're trying to ensnare him. They said, Show us a sign. Show us a sign. Give us a sign. Give, give us a sign of the Messiah. That you're the Messiah. Give us a sign of the kingdom. And after telling them that only, only the only sign yet to be given was the sign of Jonah, that is his death, his burial of three days and three nights, and then he would come forth, he would resurrect. We're told in verse 4 that he left them and departed. He left that place and departed. In the book of Mark, in chapter 8, in verse 13, it tells us that he and his disciples entered into a ship. 
and went to the other side. They had been at, well, as our, the 15th chapter of Matthew says, verse 39, they had come to the coast of Magdala, where all of this transpired. Mark says, gets it more specific than Magdala. Mark gets it specific to Dalmanutha, which was just a small city right next to Magdala. Right there, the coast of Magdala. And so they got into a ship and went to the other side after his discourse with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they got into the ship and they went to the other side. It's thought the other side was Magdala down here, the other side of the Sea of Galilee, up here to Bethsaida. Is what's up. Instead of going directly across over here to Gadara or land of the Gergesenes, went up here to Bethsaida, which would make sense because we're going to find later on that he's going up to Caesarea Philippi, which is even further north of Bethsaida. But let that be as it may. They, they got into a ship and they went to the other side, whether it was Bethsaida or where, and Verse 5 makes mention as a way of note that his disciples forgot to take food with them. I don't know about you, but if I'd have been living in those days and I was getting ready to go on a trip like that, you know, where you don't you don't have a restaurant you can stop into and, and get food. I'm going to pack me some food. <laughs> well, for whatever reason, the disciples messed up, forgot it, or whatever. And it lets us know that. But we want to be more concerned about what Jesus said to his disciples. Then the fact that they forgot to take food. So the first thing we want to notice is the caution, which is found in verse 6. Jesus is cautioning them. And I've titled this message, Caution Against Sourdough. Caution Against Sourdough. In verse 6, Jesus now cautions his disciples against the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He doesn't say, I caution you against the leaven of bread. He says, I'm cautioning you against, beware of the leaven of of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He had just finished his discourse with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the disciples were probably gathered around and probably looking on, listening, as that was their custom in traveling with him. Leaven. The word means ferment, a boiling up. It's something which works. <laughs> it works up whatever it's put into, it causes it to work, to boil up, to ferment. Leaven. Though just a little in quantity is added, yet its influence is 
is that it permeates the whole. We would say it has great influence. I mean, you, you affect the whole. That's a pretty good influence, right? It is used to illustrate most of the time moral corruption, sin. Webster's Dictionary of 1828 says it is sourdough. It is sourdough. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had an evil spirit. They were a wicked and adulterous people, Jesus said. Verse 4 of the 16th chapter, Jesus says this, a wicked and adulterous generation, in his response to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, said a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. He called them a wicked and adulterous generation. They had an evil spirit. Their principles and practices were souring. They were swelling. And they spread like leaven. <laughs> and they would destroy the good behavior of even the righteous. That's what we're cautioned about in the Word of God, isn't it? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications. Evil associations. You associate with evil people. It corrupts Good manner, good behavior. It, the good in you, the good, the good that you would do is going to corrupt. It's going to have a destructive influence. Upon your life and my life. And that's what he was cautioning his disciples about is associating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and their doctrine, it would corrupt them. It would, it would destroy, it would destruct their good behavior. <laughs> Secondly, we want to notice here The disciples <laughs> mistaken concern. The disciples mistaken concern in verse 7. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we haven't taken no bread. The word reason there, that means they, they were concerned, they were anxious. Saying, it's because we've taken no bread. Well, they had a mistaken concern. Now, what they may have thought is that Christ was cautioning them, was reproving them for forgetting food. How, how, can, how can you be so forgetful as to forget food? Yeah. 
Well, if you were his disciples, wouldn't you just think, well, maybe that's what he's saying? How can, how can you be so forgetful as to forgive food? Sounds like something we'd think, huh? Probably more likely, they thought, that since they forgot to bring food, he was cautioning them against eating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, that would be likely, wouldn't it? Okay, you've forgotten food. Don't, don't set up meat with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Which is a wise man stated in the book of Proverbs in chapter 23, in verse 6. He said, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither be, neither desire thou his dainty meats, his fine and delicate meats. Because he's because he's he's evil and because he's he, he's probably rich, he's got to wear with all boy he can he can really put the spices to the meat and really fix a, a well, filet mignon versus sirloin or round steak. I guess round steak would be worse than sirloin, huh? You, you can get a pretty good cut of sirloin if you're careful. But round steak would, oh, you know, filet mignon, now, huh? that sounds pretty dainty, doesn't it? <laughs> Caution against, the caution is against associations. Not, not that there's any danger in, in eating their food. If it's good food, if it's, if it's not spoiled, if it's not rotten, there's no danger in eating it. So where's the danger come? The danger comes in, in partaking too much with those who are evil and wicked. And that's what the caution was in, in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 23. So it might be that they thought that's what he was cautioning them against. Well, we want to take a look at the reproof that Jesus gives to them in verse 8. He said, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Hmm. Well, in this reproof that Jesus gives them, it's a reproof of, dis, of their distrust. Is it not? Is this not a lack of trust in his ability to provide physical necessities? He said unto them, O oh, ye of little faith, O oh, ye of little trust. O oh, ye of little being persuaded that a thing is so. Why, why do you deliberate? Why do you, why are you anxious? Why do you give so much thought about having brought any food? <laughs> I 
<laughs> in essence, you're so, you're so worried about the fact that you don't have any food that you're, you're missing the spiritual teaching that I'm trying to instruct you with. Jesus was not charging them with carelessness and forgetting. He was charging them with a little faith. Trust, trust Christ for your need. Trust Christ to take care of the physical. Trust in Him. Don't be troubled. Trust in Him for relief. What is it the Spirit of God says to us in the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus is displeased with their anxiety. Had he not taught them on the mount in chapter 6 of Matthew and verse 25 turn there had he not said take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on don't be anxious about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. In verse 26, he said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Amen. In verse 28, he said, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. In verse 29, he said, Solomon in all his glory. Was not arrayed like one of these. And so in summary, in verse 30, he said, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Amen. To be troubled about physical things, the things of this world, is to be distrustful of God. It's it is not to trust him. It is unbelief. In verses 9 and 10, he charges them with heightened, heightened distrust. Do ye yet not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? In, 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 in these two verses, in, in those two instances, and in reciting those two instances to them, he, he's saying to them, after all you have witnessed from my hand, from the hand of God, you still don't trust me? 
You see, <coughs> after the feeding of the 5,000, after the feeding of the 4,000, you'd have thought they had no reason to worry about food. You see, even though they had not brought food, they had him. Amen. They had Jesus. They had the great provider. He was there in their midst. The one, they had the one who had manifested his ability to take little and make it much. Amen. And if he can take little and make it much, he can take nothing and make something. And he did that when he created the world, the heavens and the earth. He said, do you not understand? Neither remember? Do you not understand? Do you not remember? I think of all the times that we experience the great blessings of God upon our lives. How time and time again he meets and supplies every need. And yet we're just like his disciples. We get all concerned, all worrisome, because we don't have what we think we ought to have. I'm guilty. I've seen great blessings of the Lord. You have too. Amen. Eating, listen, eating of, of his sustenance, eating of his provisions was to have been meat, was to have been food for their faith. Think about that. All that they had experienced from the hand of Jesus was to have been a supply of increasing their faith. Is it not so with you and I? Amen. All that we have experienced at the hand of God, at the wonderful, marvelous working of God in our lives, has it not been for food to increase, to strengthen our faith? That's what Asaph was trying to get across in Psalms chapter 74. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 74. And rehearsing God's workings, God's workings, bringing them out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, Amen. through the wilderness, crossing the Jordan, into the promised land. Look at verse 12. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood. Thou driedest up mighty rivers. 
I mean, they part, he, parted, he parted the Red Sea. He, he slew all, all the dragons, all the, all the Egyptians, the Egyptian army in the Red Sea destroyed them utterly. He, de- he defeated Leviathan, he said, in, in the wilderness and gave them meat, his meat to eat. Dried us up the river, that dried up the river Jordan, and they went across on dry ground. <laughs> Shouldn't they have been increased with faith? Shouldn't their faith and their trust of God have been strengthened? Shouldn't ours be strengthened? When we see all the mighty workings of God on our behalf. Well, in verse 11, he reproves their misconception. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning? bread concerning food, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. How is it you don't understand? How can can you think that I, the Christ, think of physical food as do you? He'd already told them in the book of John, in chapter 4. The book of John, chapter 4, in verse 34. My meat, my food, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's what he said his necessary food was. He wasn't concerned about the physical, was he? How do you not understand simple truth? Are you like the multitudes? Remember what he said to him concerning the multitudes in in chapter 13 and verse 13? Therefore spake I to them, to the multitudes, in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. You see, seeing, yet they did not see the things of God. Hearing, they did not hear the things of God, and therefore they did not understand the things of God. Are you like the multitudes? You have eyes to see, but you see not. You have ears to hear, but you hear not. And therefore, you do not understand. This is the reproof that he gives to them. In essence, he's he's saying to them and to us, You you get so concerned over the physical that when you when you come to sit at the feet of Jesus, when you come into the house of the Lord, you miss you miss the spiritual teachings that are there in, in, in at the feet of Jesus. You miss the spiritual teachings that are there in the house of the Lord because you're all concerned with the physical. Guilty. So he reproved them of that. So we come to verse 12. Notice that reproof gives understanding. Think about that. Reproof gives understanding. 
Then, after they've been reproved, understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then they understood what he meant. After they'd been reproved, they understood what he meant. He reproves us of our weak and foolish ways. And why does he do it? That we might understand. That we might understand. That we might walk in right paths. He teaches us by the, by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That we might understand and see more of Him, more of His holiness and righteousness. Look at, at the book of Ephesians in chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Well, what is wisdom? Wisdom is skill. How do you get skill? You get, you get skill through the experiences. And, and when you get that wisdom, what do you get? Revelation. Amen. You get an understanding. You get an understanding of God and His holiness and His righteousness. Amen. So we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need the spirit. Uh, we need to be reproved by the spirit. And therefore, we get wisdom. We get understanding. We get understanding in the ways of God. Now, they understood that he was teaching them they must beware of false teachers Amen. after that they had been reproved after that they had gotten wisdom, they got understanding. They had been enlightened to the frivolousness of their cares of this world and the anxieties of this world. They had been reproved of that. And now their eyes were ready to feast upon him and what he was telling them, what he was instructing them concerning. He was going to give them, he was giving them good teaching. Beware of false prophets. Those who, who sound good in their teaching that's what Pharisees and Sadducees sounded good in their teaching. Jesus, in chapter 26 of Matthew, said, You take heed, the scribes and the Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. You listen to what they tell you, but don't do as they do. You see, they didn't bear witness of the truth in their lives. 
Men can get up and they can sound pretty good with what's coming out of their mouth. But does their life bear out the truth of what they're saying? Does your life bear, for, bear forth the truth? Does my life bear forth the truth? In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, in verse 104, the psalmist said, Through thy precepts, through thy commandments, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. <laughs> yeah. Through the commandments of God, through the precepts of God, I get understanding. I'm, I'm reproved. Often I'm reproved when I look in this book and I get understanding of the ways of God. I get, I get a brighter glimpse of his holiness and of his righteousness. Spirit of God told, tell, tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? Because that reproof, that instruction, that, that teaching us what's right, teaching us what's wrong, teaching us how to get right, teaching us how to stay right, is good for us. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen. That we might walk in the paths of the Lord. <laughs> We're going to be dealing with good works this afternoon. So Proverbs chapter 4 in verse 5, we read, Get wisdom. Well, get experience. In other words, through the experiences of life and the sins that we commit and God reproves us and corrects us, we get skill. We get skill in what's wrong and what's right. <laughs> and he said, get understanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once, once, we, once we've been reproved and corrected, we can get understanding. We can, see, we can see the righteousness and holiness of God. That's how to get right and how to stay right. You see? <laughs> We get right by walking in his paths, and we stay right by continuing to walk in his paths. You see? Verse 7 of the same chapter of Proverbs says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. This morning... Let us not be concerned and troubled over the cares of this life, over the physical. Definitely not to the point that we miss the spiritual. You see, these disciples, they were, they were so concerned, so consumed with the fact that they, they forgot to bring food, that even when Jesus has given them a, a spiritual truth and a spiritual instruction, all they could see is that they had forgotten food. They could not see what he was teaching them. Can see? Can we see? 
what God is trying to teach us and to instruct us when we go to his word in, in time of devotion, when we come to his house and partake in the singing of praise, are, are we in such a turmoil because of the cares of this life that we fail to miss the blessings of God, the instructions of God upon our lives? Shall we stand, have a song in closing?